According to Reuters, Hong Kong stocks rose on Wednesday as hopes of Chinese authorities coming to the rescue of a battered market and news of Jack Ma scooping up Alibaba Group shares lifted market sentiment. The Hang Seng Index jumped 2.4% and the Hang Seng Tech Index was up as much as 3.7% in early trade, driven by the gains in benchmark heavyweight Alibaba, before ceding some ground. By midday, the Xi was up only 0.8%. According to Reuters, China and Nauru on Wednesday re-established diplomatic ties, Chinese state television CCTV reported, after the tiny Pacific island nation severed relations with Taiwan. Democratically governed Taiwan lost Nauru, one of its few remaining diplomatic allies, to China on January 15, just days after a new Taiwanese president was elected. According to Reuters, Tesla has told suppliers it wants to start production of a new mass-market electric vehicle codenamed, Redwood, in mid-2025, according to four people familiar with the matter, with two of them describing the model as a compact crossover. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has long whetted fans and investors' appetites for affordable electric vehicles and self-driving robotaxis that are expected to be made on next-generation, cheaper electric car platforms. According to Reuters, a group of investors managing more than $25 trillion said they plan to challenge mining companies that have not yet committed to a tailings dam best practice standard and may vote against management at upcoming annual meetings. The Investor Mining and Tailings Safety Initiative was launched in August 2020 in response to the Brumadinho disaster in Brazil where 270 people were killed when a tailings dam collapsed. According to Reuters, Egyptian economic growth will be slower than previously expected as its pound weakens, inflation cuts into purchasing power and fallout from the Gaza crisis eats into the country's main sources of foreign currency, a Reuters poll showed on Wednesday. Revenue from the Suez Canal fell 40% in early January after sea attacks by Yemen's Houthis diverted away shipping. The crisis in neighboring Gaza that started in October has also weakened the tourism outlook. According to Reuters, the nose wheel of a Boeing 757 passenger jet operated by Delta Airlines popped off and rolled away as the plane was lining up for takeoff over the weekend from Atlanta's International Airport, according to the Federal Aviation Administration. Boeing was not immediately available to comment outside regular business hours. According to Reuters, Australia's oldest listed investment firm is finding beaten-down lithium shares are starting to look like buys, with the sector's downturn reminiscent of the hasty selling in healthcare stocks caused by weight loss drug Ozempic, its top executive said. Founded in 1928, Australian Foundation Investment Company manages 9.3 billion Australian dollars and is a top 20 shareholder in blue chips such as Macquarie Group and BHP Group. According to Reuters, New Caledonian nickel producer Prony Resources is facing an alarming situation amid a slump in metal prices as it waits for the possibility France will offer monetary support for the territory's nickel sector, a company spokesperson said. Prony's struggles highlight the troubles of the French Pacific Island Territory's nickel industry, the fourth biggest producer of nickel ore globally, as prices have plummeted 40% in the past year on surging Indonesian supply. After years of losses, France is trying to work out an agreement by the end of the month to bolster the producers through investments to help reduce costs. According to Bloomberg, Japanese government bonds dropped as traders judged comments from the central bank on Tuesday to be hawkish and brought forward their bets for an interest rate hike in coming months. The yield on benchmark 10-year notes climbed 10.5 basis points to 0.74%, the highest in more than a month. Governor Kazuo Ueda said the certainty of achieving the Bank of Japan's price projections has continued to gradually increase, after it left monetary policy unchanged and introduced new language in the quarterly outlook report on Tuesday. According to Bloomberg, the Indian-born financier who helped open the floodgates to Middle Eastern wealth for Masayoshi Son's $100 billion vision fund is attempting his second act. This time, he's going solo. At SoftBank Group Corpy's splashy tech vehicle, Rajiv Misra helped secure commitments worth $45 billion from Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund and $15 billion from Abu Dhabi's Mubadala Investment Co. Investments in high-flying startups ensued, Uber Technologies Inc. and WeWork Inc. among them, but many bets blew up as markets turned. Misra largely stepped back from that venture in 2022 after a tenure marred by internal clashes and investment write-downs.
According to Reuters, at least six people were killed including three firefighters after a truck carrying 60 tons of liquefied natural gas exploded in the Mongolian capital of Ulaanbaatar on Tuesday, according to Mongolia's emergency officials. At least 11 people were injured in the fire near the Dunjingarov market, Mongolia's emergency management office said in a post on Facebook. According to Bloomberg, Japanese government bonds tumbled and stocks fell as interest rate hike bets gathered pace. Equities across the rest of Asia were mixed. Japan's 10-year sovereign yield briefly rose more than 10 basis points after Governor Kazuo Ueda said Tuesday that the certainty of achieving the Bank of Japan's price projections has continued to rise. Traders judged the comments as hawkish, spurring a 1% decline in the Nikkei 225 index. The yen strengthened against the dollar. According to Reuters, global investors aren't expecting much from China's economy this year, but some say the collapse in its already cheap stocks merits a wager on an eventual rebound and perhaps a new approach to investing in the market. Measures such shrinking short positions, fund flows, options pricing and bounces on the main board show investors have been selectively buying or at least curtailing bearish bets lately. According to Reuters, Commercial property stocks and bonds are rallying as forecasters widely predict the end of a market slump triggered by a multi-trillion dollar debt burden. Real estate investment trusts, the stock market listed commercial building owners, have rebounded to levels last seen before U.S. lender Silicon Valley Bank collapsed in March 2023, sparking fears of a major credit crunch for landlords. According to Reuters, carrying more stock, Switching to suppliers nearer to consumers and reducing dependence on China are tactics European and U.S. retailers use to build more resilient supply chains following disruptions during the COVID-19 pandemic. Faced now with transport delays of two weeks or more as cargo ships are rerouted from the Red Sea, they have limited financial wiggle room to splurge on workarounds like air freight that would get products into stores faster. According to Reuters, a strong U.S. economy and pushback from central bank officials is leading some investors to rethink their bets on how quickly the Federal Reserve will cut rates this year, a shift that is rippling through Treasury and foreign exchange markets even as stocks sit near record highs. Expectations that the Fed would ease monetary policy in 2024 after its most aggressive tightening cycle in decades fueled an explosive rally in stocks and bonds in the final months of last year, boosting the S&P 500 to an annual gain of more than 24%. According to Bloomberg, Alibaba Group holding limited South Asian online retailer Dara's Group installed a new chief executive officer, the latest in a series of management shuffles at the Chinese e-commerce juggernaut. James Dong, 44, who heads Alibaba's Southeast Asian arm Lazada Group SA, will replace Dara's founder BRK Mickelson as acting CEO with immediate effect and oversee its operations in addition to his other duties, Dara's said in a statement Wednesday. According to Reuters, Unilever, the maker of Dove Soap and Ben Jerry's ice cream, struggled to defend fourth-quarter grocery store market share across most of its categories in Europe and the United States, data shows, as it ceded some of its turf to private labels and cut products. The food and consumer products industry has increased prices sharply on basic goods in recent years to make up for soaring input costs that began with the pandemic and were exacerbated by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. According to Bloomberg, Chinese authorities boosted messages of policy support in a bid to stabilize market confidence, underscoring the heightened concern to stem the rout in stocks. The nation's state-owned enterprise watchdog on Wednesday promised to improve the quality of listed SOs and to include the management of market capitalization in the performance reviews of SOE executives. The China Securities Regulatory Commission held a meeting a day earlier and vowed to make every effort to maintain the stable operation of capital markets and to calm investor nerves. According to Reuters, ASML holding NV, Europe's biggest technology company by market value, on Wednesday reported better than expected fourth quarter sales and net profit, helped by booming chipmaking equipment sales to China. Net profit rose 9% to 2.0 billion euros on sales of 7.2 billion euros, beating analyst expectations of a 1.87 billion euro net profit on revenue of 6.9 billion euros, according to LSCG data. According to Reuters, UBS announced changes to its executive board on Wednesday, with Alexander Ivanovich being named head of the bank's $1.6 trillion asset management business.
Ivanovich will replace Sunni Harford, who is retiring in the change that is effective from March 1. According to Bloomberg, Bill Ackman and his wife Neri Oxman have bought 5% of the main stock exchange in Israel for roughly $17 million, making the hedge fund billionaire's first major investment in the country since its war with Hamas erupted. Tel Aviv Stock Exchange Limited said it had completed the sale of an 18.5% stake to a group of foreign and local investors for 242 million shekels. Ackman and Oxman were the only ones it named. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average fell on Wednesday as profit-taking continued from the last session, while traders interpreted the tone at the latest Bank of Japan meeting as hawkish. The Nikkei fell 0.8% to 36,226.48, further edging down from a fresh 34-year peak of 36,984.51 hit on Tuesday and erasing gains from the week thus far. According to Reuters, Japan's Nippon Steel Executive Vice President Takahiro Mori has met U.S. Congress members to discuss acquisition of U.S. Steel, the company said, as it faces strong resistance to the deal. The world's fourth-largest steelmaker's planned $14.9 billion deal has drawn criticism from Democratic and Republican lawmakers and the powerful United Steelworkers Union, the main union at the third-largest U.S. steel company. According to Bloomberg, sign up for the India Edition newsletter by Manaka Doshi, an insider's guide to the emerging economic powerhouse, and the billionaires and businesses behind its rise, delivered weekly. Analysts are starting to sour on Hindustan Unilever Limited as weak rural demand clouds the outlook for India's largest consumer staples company. According to Bloomberg, China's mutual fund houses are trying to tamp down investors' enthusiasm for U.S. stocks, putting new restrictions on buying into their products as demand source. China asset management company halted subscriptions into a pair of mutual funds that invest in the exchange-traded funds tracking the Nasdaq 100 and SP500, according to its statement Wednesday. The firm warned of a rising premium on one of its ETFs over the value of its underlying asset, and said restrictions are meant to protect investors and ensure stable fund operations. According to Reuters, Asian shares rose on Wednesday on optimism that Chinese authorities will offer support for its stock markets, which have plummeted to multi-year lows, while a hawkish tilt from the Bank of Japan lifted the yen and nudged bond yields there higher. The MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan was up 0.4%. Still, the index is down 5% in January, set for its worst monthly performance since August. According to Reuters, Finnish telecom gearmaker Nokia said on Wednesday it had signed a 5G patent cross-licensing deal with Chinese device maker Oppo that resolves patent litigation between the companies. Nokia has been involved in legal disputes with several Chinese tech firms, including Oppo, over patent payments. The Finnish group recently signed an agreement with Chinese smartphone maker Honor. According to Reuters, power generated from low emission sources, such as wind, solar and nuclear, will be adequate to meet growth in global demand for the next three years, the International Energy Agency said, adding power sector emissions are on the decline. Following record growth, Electricity generation from low emission sources will account for almost half of the world's power by 2026, up from less than 40% in 2023, the IEA said in report on Wednesday. According to Bloomberg, for veteran hedge fund investor Chua Soon Hock, 2024 was supposed to herald a multi year rise in Chinese stocks and the opportunity of a lifetime. Instead, his fund's sudden demise sends a warning to fellow China bulls stick to your guns at your peril. Chua's Asia Genesis Asset Management Private told investors this week the $330 million fund would close after it was badly burned by wrong-way bets on Japan, and by falling Chinese markets that he largely blamed on inaction by policymakers, including President Xi Jinping. According to Reuters, Sri Lanka's lawmakers are set to vote on a social media regulation bill on Wednesday which opposition politicians and activists allege will muzzle free speech. The online safety bill proposes jail terms for content that a five-member commission considers illegal and makes social media platforms such as Google, Facebook and X, formerly known as Twitter, liable for those posted on their platforms. According to Bloomberg, 
ASML holding NV orders more than tripled last quarter from the previous three months as demand for its most sophisticated machines soared, in a sign that the semiconductor industry may be recovering. Order bookings rose to 9.19 billion euros in the fourth quarter from 2.6 billion euros in July to September, Europe's most valuable technology companies said in a statement on Wednesday. That compares with an average estimate of 3.6 billion euros by analysts surveyed by Bloomberg. According to Bloomberg, Australia's Prime Minister Anthony Albanese plans to scale back tax cuts for the nation's wealthy in favour of low- and middle-income earners, local media reported, a politically risky move after he pledged ahead of the 2022 election to keep the legislated package unchanged. Albanese's cabinet signed off on the changes to the legislation, known as the Stage 3 tax cuts, following a meeting on Tuesday, according to the Australian Financial Review. The new legislation will be put to the centre-left Labour Party's lawmakers ahead of an announcement by the Prime Minister. According to Reuters, SoftBank Group has sold an additional 2% in India's Paytm, the latest in a string of sell-downs in the digital payments firm. The Japanese conglomerate, which sold shares between December 19 and January 20, now holds a 5.06% stake in the company, according to an exchange filing on Wednesday. According to Bloomberg, Oppo has struck a cross-licensing deal with Nokia OYJ, ending a years-long dispute in allowing the Chinese smartphone major to freely sell devices in key European markets including Germany. The two companies reached an agreement to license 5G and other wireless technology patents, ending a series of lawsuits across the globe, they said in a joint statement on Wednesday. That means Guangdong-based Oppo can return to selling its full portfolio of handsets in Germany which in 2022 fined the Chinese firm for violating Nokia's intellectual property. According to Reuters, the Athens Stock Exchange has approved the planned listing of the Athens International Airport, the operator of Greece's biggest airport, it said late on Tuesday. Athens plans to sell a 30% stake or 90 million shares in the airport through a combined offering to Greek and foreign investors and existing shareholders and list the asset. According to Bloomberg, China will cut the reserve requirement ratio for banks in early February to unleash more money and help the economy, according to People's Bank of China Governor Pan Gongsheng. A 0.5 percentage point cut to the ratio, the amount of cash that banks have to keep in reserve, will provide 1 trillion yuan in long-term liquidity to the market, Pan said during a briefing with the press Wednesday. According to Reuters, the ruble recovered ground against the dollar on Wednesday after falling sharply in the previous session as the government and central bank publicly disputed the need to extend capital controls that have been buttressing the Russian currency. At 0758 GMT, the ruble was 0.5% stronger against the dollar at 88.27, having slid towards 89 in the previous session. According to Reuters, China's central bank will cut the amount of cash that banks must hold as reserves from February 5, Governor Pan Gongsheng said on Wednesday, the first such cut for the year as policymakers extend efforts to shore up a fragile economic recovery. Pan said the People's Bank of China would cut the reserve requirement ratio for all banks by 50 basis points. According to Reuters, butter chicken, one of India's best-known dishes globally, is delicious and apparently also contentious, with two Indian restaurant chains doing battle in court over claims to its origins. The lawsuit, which has become a hot topic in India, was brought by the family behind Modi Mahal, a famed Delhi restaurant brand that has counted late US President Richard Nixon and India's first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru among its guests. According to Bloomberg, SAPSE shares jumped the most in more than three years after the German software company said it's planning a restructuring that will affect about 8,000 jobs and increase its focus on artificial intelligence. The company projected that operating profit would rise to roughly 10 billion euros next year as a result. The shares jumped 7.1% at 9.10 a.m. in Frankfurt after earlier jumping as much as 7.5% to 160 euros and 58 cents, the biggest intraday gain since July 2020 in a record high. According to Reuters, Dutch computer chip equipment maker ASML on Wednesday said it expected new US and Dutch export restrictions to reduce its potential sales to China by some 10-15% to this year after they hit record levels in 2023. 
CFO Roger Dassen also confirmed that two older tools not covered by Dutch licensing requirements would be directly restricted from China by U.S. rules. According to Reuters, billionaire hedge fund manager Bill Ackman and his Israeli-born wife Neri Oxman have agreed to buy an equity stake of around 4.9% in the Tel Aviv stock exchange, the Israeli bourse said on Wednesday. The purchase was part of the TASE's secondary offering of 18.5% of its shares, in which it sold 17.2 million shares at 20.60 shekels per share for 353.4 million shekels. According to Reuters, North Korea is developing artificial intelligence and machine learning for everything from how to respond to COVID-19 and safeguard nuclear reactors to wargaming simulations and government surveillance, according to a new study. International sanctions imposed over its nuclear weapons program may have hindered North Korea's attempts to secure AI hardware, but it appears to be pursuing the latest technology, wrote study author Hyuk Kim of the James Martin Center for Nonproliferation Studies in California. According to Bloomberg, France's farmers continued to block major roads across the country on Wednesday, demanding urgent action from President Emmanuel Macron's government to cut back costs and burdensome regulation. Areas around the southern cities of Bordeaux and Lyon continue to see the worst disruption with tractors and farm vehicles blocking major highways. Farmers from most regions plan more action to exacerbate traffic around the country in the coming days, Arnaud Rousseau, the head of the FNSEA union said. According to Reuters, the downturn in Eurozone business activity eased this month but an improvement in the manufacturing outlook was partly offset by a steeper decline in the bloc's dominant services industry, a survey showed on Wednesday. HCOB's preliminary composite PMI, compiled by SP Global, rose to 47.9 this month from December's 47.6, just shy of expectations in a Reuters poll for 48.0 but marking its eighth month below the 50 level separating growth from contraction. According to Bloomberg, Electricité de France saw's nuclear project at Hinkley Point in the UK will cost as much as £10 billion extra to build and take several years longer than planned, the latest in a series of setbacks for the budget and timetable of the country's largest energy project. EDF now expects the two reactors it's building in southwest England to cost between £31 billion and £35 billion in 2015 terms, the French energy company said in a statement on Tuesday. That's up from an estimate of £25 billion to £26 billion in 2022, and is the fifth budget increase in eight years. According to Reuters, Chinese Premier Li Chang went to the World Economic Forum in Davos last week with a mission to present a positive image of the economy and schmooze financial elites. Investing in the Chinese market is not a risk, but an opportunity. The message fell flat. According to Reuters, Poland's new representative at the World Bank will be Mariusz Krakowski, currently chief advisor at the European Investment Bank, a government source told Reuters on Wednesday. Minister Demanski signed the nomination for this position for Mariusz Krakowski, Business Insider, which earlier reported the news said. According to Reuters, South Korean aero parts supplier KP Aero Industries said on Wednesday it plans to invest $20 million in a Vietnam factory to assemble components for Boeing planes a move that would expand the U.S. aviation firm's manufacturing network in the Southeast Asian country. The U.S. aviation giant already has seven, sub-tier, suppliers, companies that sell components to its direct suppliers, in Vietnam. According to Reuters, Hong Kong stocks clocked their best day in more than two months on Wednesday after China's central bank said it will cut banks' reserve ratio a move expected to boost sentiment after a market meltdown earlier this week, while mainland stocks also bounced. Mounting hopes that Chinese authorities would come to the rescue of the battered market with more measures and news of Jack Ma scooping up Alibaba Group shares also lifted overall market sentiment. China A shares closed higher, but before the rate cuts were announced. According to Reuters, China's central bank will cut the amount of cash that banks must hold as reserves from February 5th, the first such cut for the year as policymakers extend efforts to shore up a fragile economic recovery amid plunging stock markets. The world's second-largest economy struggled to mount a strong post-COVID recovery last year as distress in the housing market, local government debt risks and weakening global demand slowed momentum, weighing on investors' sentiment at the beginning of 2024. 
According to Bloomberg, Netflix Inc. signed up 13.1 million customers in the final three months of 2023, the streaming giant's best quarter of growth since viewers were stuck at home in the early days of the pandemic. The strong tally exceeded Wall Street's estimate of 8.91 million and beat projections in every region of the world, with Netflix adding more than 5 million customers in Europe, the Middle East and Africa alone. Sales rose to $8.83 billion, the company said Tuesday, also topping forecasts. According to Reuters, global shares rose on Wednesday, fueled by positive tech earnings and optimism Chinese authorities will offer support to its stock markets, while the dollar showed resilience on growing expectations the US Federal Reserve won't rush to cut rates. European stocks climbed 0.8%, with tech stocks adding over 3.6% to their highest in two years. According to Bloomberg, Nidic Corp. slashed its full-year operating income guidance by almost 20% on what it said was fierce price competition in the Chinese electric vehicle motors market. The Kyoto-based maker of Precision Motors said it will need to take restructuring charges, cut costs and limit unprofitable orders. To combat competition from other suppliers in the Chinese EV market, NIDIC will also need to localize product development and procurement, it said Wednesday. According to Reuters, a key offshore bondholder group of China Evergrande plans to join a petition to liquidate the developer at a hearing in a Hong Kong court on Monday, two sources with direct knowledge said. The bondholder group owns more than $2 billion in offshore notes guaranteed by Evergrande and its support to a winding-up petition against the world's most indebted developer could increase the chances of an immediate liquidation order from the court, lawyers in the industry said. According to Bloomberg, sign up for the India Edition newsletter by Manaka Doshi, an insider's guide to the emerging economic powerhouse, and the billionaires and businesses behind its rise, delivered weekly. Indian bonds are likely to attract about $100 billion of foreign inflows in the coming years, lured by the global bond index inclusion, according to HSBC Asset Management. According to Yahoo Finance, Tesla's stock has had a bumpy ride so far in 2024, with shares sliding as the broader market hits new highs. Investors will be hoping the EV stalwart's fourth quarter earnings, due after the bell on Wednesday, could spell some relief. Headlines like rental car firm Hertz shedding thousands of EVs, Tesla cutting prices in China, a two-week production halt in Berlin, and CEO Elon Musk's ill-timed demand for more stock have weighed on Tesla. Tesla shares are down over 15% since the start of year, with the SP500 up nearly 2%. According to Reuters, Donald Trump didn't just want to win in New Hampshire. He wanted to beat Nikki Haley so badly that his sole rival for the Republican presidential nomination would drop out before the next competitive contest in South Carolina a month away. The former president easily bested the former South Carolina governor on Tuesday, but his carefully crafted strategy to drive Haley out of the race fell short, denying Trump the chance, for now, to focus all his attention on Democratic U.S. President Joe Biden and the November general election. According to Reuters, Donald Trump cruised to victory in New Hampshire's Republican presidential contest on Tuesday, marching closer to a November rematch with Democratic President Joe Biden even as his sole remaining rival for the nomination, Nikki Haley, vowed to soldier on. This race is far from over, Haley, a former UN ambassador, told supporters at a post-election party in Concord, challenging Trump to debate her. According to Reuters, Eurozone bond yields dipped on Wednesday as traders digested data showing the downturn in Eurozone business activity eased this month while looking ahead to Thursday's European Central Bank meeting. Germany's 10-year yield, the benchmark for the Eurozone was at 2.32%, down around 3 basis points, retracing some of the previous day's 9 basis point increase which took it to a 7-week high. According to Reuters, Thailand hopes to start producing lithium from a mine in its southwest in about two years, boosting its ambitions to become a regional electric vehicle production hub, according to government and company officials involved in the project. The silvery white element is a key metal for EV batteries and establishing lithium mines would put Thailand in a unique position compared to other major producers because it is also developing an EV production industry, including $1.44 billion in investment commitments from Chinese carmakers. According to Reuters, 
banks in the European Union face closer scrutiny of how they assess the impact of interest rate changes on their balance sheets after an initial examination uncovered a patchwork of approaches, the bloc's banking watchdog said on Wednesday. The European Banking Authority last year discussed with banks how they apply a rule known as interest rate risk in the banking book or IRRBB written by the Global Basel Committee. According to Reuters, European shares moved higher on Wednesday, boosted by technology stocks after software firm SAP and chip-making equipment maker ASML holding posted strong earnings, while fresh stimulus from China's central bank further aided sentiment. The pan-European stocks 600 index was up 0.8%, as of 0930 GMT, hitting an over one-week high. According to Bloomberg, India is aiming to cooperate with France on the development of small modular nuclear reactors, as Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government seeks to expand its options to curb the country's reliance on coal. Electricité de France SA and India's Department of Atomic Energy are likely to complete a preliminary agreement to collaborate on the so far largely unproven technology as French President Emmanuel Macron visits New Delhi this week, according to people familiar with the plans, who ask not to be identified as the details are private. According to Reuters, Eurozone business activity contracted again this month, albeit at a shallower pace than in December, as an improvement in the manufacturing outlook was partly offset by a steeper decline in the bloc's dominant services industry, a survey showed. HCOB's preliminary Eurozone composite PMI, compiled by SP Global, rose to 47.9 this month from December's 47.6 just shy of expectations in a Reuters poll for 48.0 but marking its eighth month below the 50 level separating growth from contraction. According to Bloomberg, oil edged higher as signs of lower U.S. inventories and tensions in the Middle East outweighed expectations for more supply over 2024. Global benchmark Brent inched toward $80 a barrel after easing on Tuesday, while West Texas Intermediate neared $75. The industry-funded American Petroleum Institute reported that nationwide U.S. stockpiles declined by almost 7 million barrels last week, including a drop at the key hub at Cushing, Oklahoma. Official figures are due later on Wednesday. According to Reuters, cryptocurrency lender Nexo is seeking $3 billion in damages from Bulgaria over an aborted criminal investigation that the company alleges scuppered its plans for a U.S. stock market listing and a soccer sponsorship deal legal filings seen by Reuters show. Nexo AG, a Swiss unit of Cayman Islands-based Nexo Capital, alleges the investigation tarnished its reputation and destroyed shareholder value, according to a document filed with the World Bank's International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes. According to Bloomberg, Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Olayemi Cardozo said inflation will moderate this year and described the country's Naira currency as undervalued, in his first public comments on the economy since November. Inflationary pressures are expected to decline in 2024 due to the CBN's inflation targeting policy, which aims to rein in inflation to 21.4%, Cardozo told an event Wednesday hosted by the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. According to Bloomberg, palm oil output in Malaysia, the number two supplier, could rise 5% this year after the government allowed plantations to hire foreign workers, said Joseph Tech, chief executive of the Malaysian Palm Oil Association. The admission of new workers potentially means that an additional 5.2 million tons of fresh fruit bunches can be harvested, the top growers group said in a statement. That translates into 1 million tons of crude palm oil, Tech said. According to Reuters, an economic crisis in China would knock some 1.5% off German economic growth and likely hurt its banks but an outright decoupling from the world's second-largest economy would be much worse, the Bundesbank said on Wednesday. According to its simulations, real German GDP would be 0.7% lower in the first year of the crisis and just under 1% in the second year as a result of lower exports to China, which is Germany's fourth-largest market. China is struggling with distress in the housing market local government debt and weakening global demand, adding to fractious trade and geopolitical relations with the West. According to Reuters, Netflix soared 10% on Wednesday as its blowout subscriber growth cemented investor confidence the firm has won the streaming wars with its password-sharing crackdown and a strong content slate. The streaming pioneer was set to increase its market value by about $20 billion, if pre-market gains hold, 
based on its share price of $542 before the bell. According to Reuters, Britain's aviation regulator is studying designs for flying taxi airports, it said on Wednesday, as the arrival of a new mode of transport edges closer. Electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, also known as flying taxis or air taxis, have been touted as the future of urban air mobility. According to Reuters, train drivers walked off the job on Wednesday in Germany's longest rail strike yet, stranding commuters and piling pain on the country's economy, with both sides far from agreement. Across Europe, transport workers have staged strikes to demand higher wages to cope with the impact of inflation. According to Reuters, despite a bullish U.S. stock market and strong economy, workers axed in mass layoffs are struggling to get back on their feet. Recent cuts include 13% of the workforce at online retailer Wayfair, 20% at toymaker Hasbro, 17% at digital music provider Spotify, and 35% at live streaming platform Twitch. According to Reuters, Protesting farmers blocked roads across France on Wednesday to press the government to ease its drive for lower consumer prices and reduce environmental regulations. Many farmers struggle financially and say their livelihoods are threatened as food retailers are increasing pressure to bring down prices after a phase of high inflation. According to Reuters, the Bank of Canada is expected to keep its overnight rate on hold on Wednesday when it also releases new inflation and growth forecasts that should provide insight into the central bank's view on when borrowing costs may begin to ease. The BOC Governing Council has held rates steady at three consecutive policy meetings after last hiking in July to a 22-year high of 5.0%. Annual inflation in December was 3.4%, still higher than the central bank's 2% target but below a peak of 8.1% in June 2022. According to Bloomberg, tech stocks led the rally in Europe as ASML holding NV's strong quarterly orders and SAP says estimate beating results lifted investors' sentiment after shaky start to 2024. The tech sector soared nearly 4%, adding roughly €36 billion Euros in market value as the region's top two tech companies signaled booming demand for their industries. Chip equipment maker ASML, bellwether for the industry's health, rose as much as 7.5%, the biggest increase since November 2022. According to Reuters, at forecast annual profit below market expectations on Wednesday as the U.S. carrier grapples with tough competition from cable operators and lowers the value of some of its old equipment sending shares down nearly 3% in pre-market trading. Telecom operators have in recent months faced pressure from cable operators such as Charter Communications, which have chipped away at their market share with a competitive network and pricing. According to Reuters, U.S. stock index futures climbed on Wednesday, after Netflix surged on posting its largest ever fourth-quarter subscriber growth, while ASML's strong earnings drove gains in chip stocks. Netflix jumped 10.1% in pre-market trading after the streaming giant's fourth-quarter subscriber additions blew past estimates on a strong slate of shows including the final season of The Crown and David Fincher's film, The Killer. According to Reuters, Nigeria's central bank is targeting an inflation decline to 21.4%, Governor Olayemi Cardozo said on Wednesday, adding that bank officials thought the country's Naira currency was undervalued. Cardozo faces pressure to raise interest rates when policymakers at the Central Bank of Nigeria hold a rate-setting meeting next month for the first time since he took office in September. According to Reuters, Ethiopia's deal to lease a port in Somalia's breakaway region of Somaliland has infuriated the government in Mogadishu and prompted concern it will further destabilize the Horn of Africa region. Under a Memorandum of Understanding signed on January 1, landlocked Ethiopia would lease 20 kilometers around Somaliland's port of Berbera for 50 years, in exchange for stakes in Ethiopian state-run companies and possible recognition as an independent nation. According to Reuters, German national Stefan Walter, who has been with the ECB for a decade, has been appointed the new chief executive of the Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Authority FINMA and will take up his new role on April 1, the authority said on Wednesday. According to Reuters, Z Entertainment said on Wednesday it has called on Sony Group to withdraw the Japanese company's termination of a $10 billion merger between its local unit and the Indian broadcaster.
Z denies Sony's claims that it breached its obligations under the deal and has started legal action to contest the claims in arbitration proceedings before the Singapore International Arbitration Center, Z said. According to Reuters, the premium that investors demand to hold the riskiest European corporate debt has fallen to its lowest in just under two years, as buyers are lured by high yields and the prospect of central bank rate cuts. The extra yield that investors demand for holding the debt of companies rated below investment grade compared to the risk-free rate fell to 373 basis points on Tuesday, its smallest since early February 2022, according to LSEG data on the ICEB of a Euro corporate bond index. According to Reuters, Cleveland Cliffs Inc. sought to convince U.S. Steel Corp. last month that its cash and stock acquisition offer was worth $1.4 billion more than an all-cash winning bid from Nippon Steel Corp., a regulatory filing showed on Wednesday. Nippon Steel beat Cleveland Cliffs in a sale process for U.S. Steel with a $14.1 billion bid that was announced on December 18. The deal price of $55 per share represented a whopping 142% premium to August 11, the last trading day before Cleveland Cliffs unveiled a $35 per share bid for U.S. Steel. According to Reuters, the potential for a buildup of tin supplies this year is likely to put pressure on prices, but accelerating demand from the energy transition sector, including solar panels and electric vehicles, should support prices in the future. Tin is used in circuit board soldering for products like mobile phones and in electric cars and also in the manufacture of solar panels. Solder currently accounts for about half of global tin consumption. According to Reuters, EasyJet has urged French authorities to resolve air traffic control problems after a report into a near collision involving one of its jets cited staff shortages and absenteeism. This clearly has been one of the weakest links in the whole chain of aviation. We know it has been an issue particularly in France, CEO Johan Lundgren said when asked about shortages. According to Bloomberg, eBay Inc. will cut about 1,000 jobs, or 9% of its full-time employees, and reduce work for its outside contractors, saying its staffing and expenses have outpaced growth. The e-commerce company said it needs to be more nimble in the face of a challenging economic environment. According to Reuters, the pound was one of the standout performers against the dollar on Wednesday, after a survey showed business activity in the UK is outpacing that of major European economies, thereby adding to the case for British rates to stay higher for longer. The preliminary SP Global, SIPS UK Composite PMI, which spans services and manufacturing firms, rose to a seven-month high of 52.5 in January, up from December's 52.1 and above forecasts for a slightly smaller increase to 52.2. According to Reuters, the aviation industry will press regulators this week for urgent action to help tackle GPS, spoofing, amid a surge in such activity, which can send commercial airliners off course, due to conflicts in Ukraine and the Middle East. International trade body IATA and European regulator EASA have organized a meeting in Cologne, Germany, on Thursday that will bring together airlines, plane manufacturers and aviation technology firms, as well as national and regional regulatory bodies, to discuss the issue. According to Reuters, Mexican headline inflation persisted in its upward trend for the fifth half month in a row, above the expected forecasts, according to official data released on Wednesday. Annual headline inflation in Latin America's second-largest economy hit 4.90% the first 15 days of January, statistics agency Inehi said, up from the 4.66% in December and above the forecasts of 4.78% in a Reuters poll of economists. According to Yahoo Finance, for several months as Republican presidential candidates Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and tech bro Vivek Ramaswamy decried the woke mind virus, which DeSantis described as a form of cultural Marxism. That was largely an effort by two Trumpy candidates to rally voters to a novel-sounding conservative cause without attacking, and therefore alienating, Donald Trump himself. It flopped. DeSantis and Ramaswamy failed to catch an updraft, and both have ended their presidential bids. The woke mind virus, if you believe it exists, is still going strong. According to Yahoo Finance, U.S. stock futures climbed on Wednesday, with the SP500 headed for another all-time high as upbeat tech earnings led by Netflix buoyed hopes the record-setting rally will continue. SP500 futures added 0.4%, 
building on the new closing high hit on Tuesday, while Dow Jones Industrial Average futures signaled a return to gains with a rise of 0.2%. According to Yahoo Finance, Netflix said Tuesday that its fourth quarter subscriber additions surged, topping its own forecast and sending its stock more than 7% higher in after-hours trading. The subscriber additions of 13.12 million beat Netflix's own forecast of about 9 million with full-year 2023 net additions sitting at roughly 30 million. The company had added 7.67 million paying users in Q4 2022. According to Reuters, futures for Canada's resource-heavy stock index rose on Wednesday, driven by higher metal prices in the U.S. benchmark SP500 hitting a fresh high in the previous session while investors focused on the Bank of Canada's interest rate meeting due later in the day. March futures on the SPTSX index were up 0.6% at 7.04 a.m. Eastern Time. According to Reuters, Brazil's Vice President Geraldo Alckmin said on Wednesday the government will not give any fresh funds to state development bank BNDES to finance a new industrial policy aimed at boosting economic growth. The plans for the industry have nothing to do with the fiscal side, Alkman said in an interview with website UOL. The government will not make new contributions to BNDES. According to Reuters, Chipotle Mexican Grill said on Wednesday it is looking to hire 19,000 additional employees to beef up workforce at its restaurants for its busiest time of the year. The restaurant chain operator's hiring plans for this year's burrito season, which runs from March to May, is a step up from 2023, when it announced plans to hire 15,000 new workers for the period. According to Bloomberg, Argentina's labor movement is staging a general strike that will test popular support for President Javier Milei's austerity blitz less than two months into his presidency. The protest Wednesday organized by the CGT, one of the South American nation's oldest and most powerful union groups, will help set the tenor of debate as the libertarian economist attempts to slash the size of the state in a bid to tame triple-digit inflation. According to Reuters, Spotify users in Europe from March will be able to buy audiobooks and subscription plans from within the music streaming app as a result of the region's new competition law for big tech, the Swedish company said on Wednesday. The move will help the company avoid Apple's 30% fee for purchases through its app store which has long been a source of contention between app developers and the tech giant. According to Reuters, DuPont de Nemours said on Wednesday that it expects to report a fourth-quarter loss compared to a year-ago profit, sending its shares down 12% before the bell. The multi-industrial chemical company expects to report a loss from continuing operations in between $220 million and $370 million, compared to a reported profit of $105 million last year. According to Bloomberg, when Volkswagen AG spun off Porsche AG in late 2022, the investment community had visions of a supercar stock to rival Ferrari. The dream is yet to become a reality, and some investors are doubting it ever will. While Ferrari shares have soared more than 50% since the start of last year, Porsche has declined by about a fifth, sending its market value closer toward parity with that of its former parent, a far cry from a gap that once stood at 40 billion euros. According to Yahoo Finance, more than a dozen companies have conducted layoffs since the start of the year. Google trimmed a small part of its staff on Monday, for instance. And on the same day, Amazon slashed workers from its buy with Prime unit, marking the latest in a trend of cuts across major companies to start the new year. According to Bloomberg, Qatar, one of the world's biggest liquefied natural gas exporters, is delaying some shipments to Europe as conflict in the Red Sea forces longer travel times. The Middle East country informed some European buyers of delays and rescheduled shipments, according to traders with knowledge of the matter. It's reshuffling global supply to meet contractual obligations, diverting deliveries from elsewhere and swapping for available cargoes near Europe, the traders said. According to Reuters, Europe's startups will get easier access to artificial intelligence dedicated supercomputers to help them develop general purpose AI models as part of a new one stop shop to boost take up of the technology, the European Commission said on Wednesday. The proposal from the European Union executive followed a deal last month between EU countries and lawmakers on landmark rules for large powerful AI models such as Microsoft backed Chat GPT and Google's BARD in their use. 
According to Reuters, Argentina's largest union is set to hold a 12-hour strike on Wednesday in a major demonstration in the heart of Buenos Aires against tough economic austerity measures and reforms by new libertarian president Javier Malay. The action, which will hit sectors from transport to banks, is the biggest show of opposition to Malay's plans for spending cuts and privatization since he took office last month pledging to fix an economy reeling from 211% inflation and crippling debt. According to Reuters, the Biden administration is seeking to reduce the use of U.S.-made guns in foreign crimes and human rights violations by tightening oversight and rules governing commercial exports of semi-automatic weapons, Bloomberg reported on Wednesday. This follows a review by the U.S. Commerce Department of its support for American gunmakers after a Bloomberg investigation linked increasing civilian gun exports to higher rates of global gun crime, according to the report, which cited draft rules obtained by Bloomberg. According to Reuters, Carlsberg has no right to sell the beer brand of its former local partner in some international markets, a Russian court has ruled, revoking intellectual property rights of the Danish brewer after Moscow seized its local assets. Moscow took control of Carlsberg's stake in Baltica, Russia's largest brewer, in July and placed it under temporary management, prompting Carlsberg Group CEO Jacob Arup Anderson to say its business had been stolen. According to Bloomberg, U.S. forces carried out airstrikes against an Iran-backed militia in Iraq after the group had attacked an airbase where American troops are stationed. The three targets included the headquarters of Kataib Hezbollah as well as a training facility and storage space for missiles and drones, U.S. Central Command said in a statement on Tuesday evening. The facilities are also used by other militant outfits, Central Command added. According to Reuters, Nigeria's central bank aims for inflation to fall to about 21% and will work to strengthen the country's undervalued Naira currency, Governor Olayemi Cardozo said on Wednesday. Cardozo faces pressure to raise interest rates when the Central Bank of Nigeria holds a rate-setting meeting next month for the first time since he took office in September. According to Reuters, Data center operator Equinix and NVIDIA said on Wednesday they had partnered up to offer the chip firm's supercomputing systems to corporate clients. The service will make it easier for companies to own artificial intelligence computing systems and have better control over their data, instead of renting out NVIDIA's market leading chips from cloud computing providers like Amazon.com or Microsoft. According to Reuters, Russia accused Ukraine on Wednesday of shooting down a military transport plane carrying 65 captured Ukrainian soldiers to a prisoner exchange. Ukraine has yet to comment on what happened. Here's a summary of what we know so far. According to Reuters, Ford Motor said Wednesday it was recalling 2.24 million older Explorer Sport utility vehicles worldwide because trim retention clips may not be properly engaged. The recall includes 1.89 million SUVs in the United States and covers 2011 through 2019 model year vehicles because the trim could detach, said the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration on Wednesday. According to Bloomberg, Texas Instruments Inc. shares slid after the chipmaker delivered a disappointing quarterly forecast, indicating that a slump in demand for industrial and automotive electronic components is dragging on. Sales in the first quarter will be $3.45 billion to $3.75 billion, the company said in a statement Tuesday. That compares with an average analyst estimate of $4.09 billion, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Profit will be $0.96 cents to $1.16 a share, versus a prediction of $1.42. According to Reuters, Wall Street was poised for a record-breaking rally on Wednesday as Netflix surged after smashing expectations for subscriber growth, while chip stocks gained on ASML's strong earnings. The benchmark SP500 was seen hitting an intraday record high for the third time in less than a week, fueling a bull market run it confirmed on Friday after closing at an all-time high. The blue-chip Dow had also surpassed the 38,000-point mark for the first time on Monday. According to Reuters, Google on Wednesday reached a settlement in a patent infringement lawsuit over chips that power the company's artificial intelligence technology, according to a filing in Massachusetts federal court. The settlement comes the same day that closing arguments were scheduled to begin in a trial on Singular Computing's lawsuit, which had sought $1.67 billion in damages for Google's alleged misuse of its computer processing innovations. 
According to Reuters, Manchester United forward Anthony Marshall will be ruled out of play until April as he recovers from surgery for a groin injury, the club said on Wednesday. The 28-year-old only made 19 appearances this season across all competitions after being sidelined due to an undisclosed illness. He was last brought as a substitute during United's 3-0 loss to Bournemouth in the Premier League in December. According to Reuters, Wall Street's top regulator is due to finalize on Wednesday new rules requiring greater transparency in the market for deals involving special-purpose acquisition companies, an investing tool that has recently lost favor in equities markets. Also known as a blank check company, a SPOC is a publicly traded shell company used to acquire private entities, thereby taking them public while sidestepping some regulatory hurdles involved in a normal initial public offering. According to Reuters, private equity giant Carlyle Group has bought a $415 million portfolio of student loans from Truist Bank, expanding into a market that is being increasingly shunned by traditional lenders. The acquisition comes alongside Carlyle's investment in student loan firm Monogram, a deal that was disclosed on Wednesday. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden will speak to United Auto Workers members on Wednesday at a legislative conference in Washington as a long-awaited endorsement from the key labor union appears to be getting closer. Biden has already pocketed endorsements from most of the nation's major labor unions. But the seal of approval from the auto workers has taken much longer despite a full court press that included Biden joining striking workers when they targeted the Detroit three automakers in September. According to Reuters, the amount of natural gas flowing to the seven big U.S. liquefied natural gas export plants has fallen by around 6% so far in January from a record high in December due mostly to the slow return of feed gas from last week's Arctic freeze. Energy analysts also pointed to recent problems at Freeport LNG's export plant in Texas where two of three liquefaction trains have shut at least three times so far this year. According to Reuters, the Bank of Canada held its key overnight rate at 5% on Wednesday and said while underlying inflation was still a concern, the bank's focus is shifting to when to cut borrowing costs rather than whether to hike again. The BOC Governing Council has held rates steady at four consecutive policy meetings after last hiking in July. Annual inflation in December accelerated to 3.4%, still higher than the central bank's 2% target but below a June 2022 peak of 8.1%. According to Reuters, Amphenol beat revenue expectations for the fourth quarter on Wednesday riding on strong demand for its electronic components, used by the military and the automobiles sector, sending its shares up 3% in early trading. The electronics equipment makers' cables and connectors are seeing increasing demand as countries across the world expand their investments in defense technology, amid the conflict in the Middle East and the Russia-Ukraine war. The transition to electric vehicles has also boosted demand. According to Reuters, private equity firm Yellow Wood Partners is in advanced talks to acquire Chapstick, a lip balm brand, from Hallion PLC, the former consumer health division of drug developer GSK PLC, four people familiar with the matter said. Yellow Wood has prevailed in an auction for Chapstick that Hallion had launched, hoping to fetch about $600 million, the sources said. Yellow Wood's offer came in lower than what Hallion was seeking, the sources added. According to Bloomberg, Walgreens Boots Alliance Inc., the troubled drugstore chain in turnaround mode, is exploring options including a sale of Shields Health Solutions, the specialty pharmacy business it acquired a majority of three years ago, according to people familiar with the matter. The business could be valued at more than $4 billion in a sale, said the people, who asked to not be identified because the details aren't public. Walgreens is working with advisors to scope out interest in Shields Health, which is expected to draw interest from private equity firms and healthcare companies, the people said. According to Reuters, British billionaire Joe Lewis intends to plead guilty to certain U.S. criminal charges after he was charged last year with insider trading, his lawyer said on Wednesday at a hearing in Manhattan Federal Court. Lewis, whose family trust controls a majority of the Tottenham Hotspur soccer team, was charged in July 2023 with passing inside information on his portfolio companies to two of his private pilots as well as friends, personal assistants and romantic partners, enabling them, according to prosecutors, to reap millions of dollars of profit. According to Reuters, 
U.S. business activity picked up in January and inflation appeared to abate, with a measure of prices charged by companies for their products falling to the lowest level in more than three to half a year, suggesting that the economy kicked off 2024 on a strong note. SP Global said on Wednesday that its flash U.S. composite PMI output index, which tracks the manufacturing and services sectors, increased to 52.3 this month, the highest level since last June. The rise from 50.9 in December was driven by gains in both services and manufacturing activity. According to Reuters, the European Central Bank has asked some banks to closely monitor activity on social media to detect a worsening in sentiment which could lead to a deposit run, two banking executives with knowledge of the request told Reuters. European regulators have sharpened scrutiny of banks' liquidity after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Credit Suisse in March last year, the people said, requesting anonymity because the discussions are private. According to Reuters, Italian app developer Bending Spoons said on Wednesday it had finalized the acquisition of Meetup, a social network with 60 million members worldwide used to organize in-person and virtual events and gatherings. We will leverage our platform to ensure that Meetup grows even stronger in the years to come, Bending Spoons co-founder and chief executive Luca Ferrari said in a press release. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields slid on Wednesday as investors awaited the first read of fourth-quarter U.S. gross domestic product for 2023 and next week's meeting of the Federal Reserve that may hint at when policymakers begin a much-anticipated cut to interest rates. China's move to slash reserve requirements for banks and inject about $140 billion of cash into the banking system to prop up a fragile economy and plunging stock market was the day's big news, but had little direct impact on bond markets. According to Reuters, EU draft rules aimed at avoiding spats over patents essential to technologies for telecoms equipment and connected cars were approved by a key EU lawmakers group on Wednesday, despite criticism from Nokia, Ericsson and other patent holders. The European Commission proposed the draft rules in April last year, seeking to end costly and lengthy litigation over patents used in technologies for telecoms equipment, mobile phones, computers, connected cars and smart devices. According to Bloomberg, Andrea Pignataro's Ion Group borrowed billions of dollars from U.S. private lender HPS Investment Partners in recent years to fuel an acquisition spree, adding a layer of expensive loans to the pile of publicly traded debt already weighing on the Italian tycoon's fintech empire. Ion has taken about $3 billion of private loans, mostly provided by the New York-based fund, according to an analysis of its most recent financial accounts by Bloomberg News and people familiar with the matter. According to Reuters, Google is investing $8 million to support Israeli tech firms and Palestinian businesses, the Alphabet-owned group said on Wednesday, citing the need for small companies to secure financing during the Israel-Hamas war. Google said its $4 million support fund would be provided to AI startups in Israel and another $4 million would go to early-stage Palestinian startups and businesses to help them continue operating. According to Bloomberg, Microsoft Corp achieved a historic $3 trillion market valuation on Wednesday, in the latest example of how optimism over artificial intelligence has fueled a seemingly unstoppable advance in the software giant. The stock rose as much as 1.3% to $403.95, resulting in a market capitalization of $3 trillion. The threshold cements Microsoft's status as one of the largest public stocks. It briefly surpassed Apple Inc. in value, which last year became the first company to hit $3 trillion, but subsequently dropped back below the iPhone maker, with the two trading places ever since. According to Reuters, congressional Democrats, including Senator Elizabeth Warren, again asked the U.S. Commerce Department to curb assault weapon exports and increase oversight of gun exports after a Trump-era rule change eased firearms export laws, according to a letter sent on Tuesday and seen by Reuters. The Commerce Department began a 90-day pause in an October order to assess the risk of firearms being diverted to entities or activities that promote regional instability, violate human rights, or fuel criminal activities. According to Reuters, shipping company Maersk said on Wednesday two U.S. flagged vessels transiting the Bab el-Mandeb Strait northbound accompanied by the U.S. Navy had turned around after seeing explosions nearby. While en route, both ships reported seeing explosions close by and the U.S. Navy accompaniment also intercepted multiple projectiles, Maersk said in a statement.
According to Reuters, Stellantis has acquired the artificial intelligence framework, machine learning models and intellectual property rights and patents of British IT company CloudMade, the group said on Wednesday. The world's third-largest automaker said the deal would support its long-term software strategy and help with the mid-term development of its STLA smart cockpit, one of three technology platforms Stellantis is deploying, aimed at digitally integrating vehicles and drivers. According to Yahoo Finance, economic output hit its highest level in seven months in January as inflation eased, underscoring how the soft landing scenario investors are hoping for could be within reach. SP Global's Flash U.S. Composite PMI, which captures activity in both the services and manufacturing sectors, came in at 52.3 in January, up from 50.9 in December and better than the 51.0 that had been expected by economists. According to Reuters, hackers of cryptocurrency platforms stole around $1.7 billion in 2023, around 54.3% lower than the year before, a Chainalysis report showed on Wednesday. Cyber attacks have been a persistent challenge for the crypto industry, and widespread hacking is one of the reasons why most regulators around the world frown upon crypto. According to Reuters, Canada's main stock index edged higher on Wednesday, supported by gains in tech stocks, while the Bank of Canada kept its interest rate unchanged but provided no clarity on the timing of potential interest rate cuts. According to Yahoo Finance, the National Science Foundation announced on Wednesday that it is teaming up with some of the biggest names in tech to launch the National Artificial Intelligence Research Resource Pilot Program. The NAIRR pilot, the NSF said, is designed to create a national resource for researchers and educators to access high-powered AI technologies with the goal of ensuring the U.S. continues to lead in AI research and innovation. According to Reuters, a U.S. court on Wednesday ruled that holder of Venezuelan bonds Altana Credit Opportunities Fund could seek proceeds from a coming auction of shares in Citgo Petroleum's parent to pay the country's creditors. The decision paves the way for Altana to cash its about $530 million claim from proceeds in an auction of shares in PDV Holding, whose only asset is oil refiner Citgo. The auction could conclude later this year, U.S. Judge Leonard Stark ruled. According to Reuters, a U.S. Senate committee approved legislation on Wednesday that would help set the stage for the United States to confiscate Russian assets and hand them over to Ukraine for rebuilding after the destruction of the nearly two-year-long war. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee voted 20 to 1 in favor of the unprecedented Rebuilding Economic Prosperity and Opportunity for Ukrainians Act. According to Reuters, the federal U.S. consumer finance watchdog on Wednesday proposed a new rule cracking down on fees that banks charge consumers when they do not have sufficient funds to cover a purchase or transaction in real time. The proposed Consumer Financial Protection Bureau rule is part of a broader crackdown by the administration of President Joe Biden on so-called junk fees, a range of companies charge consumers, and comes as banks are already fighting the consumer watchdog over other proposed fee curbs. According to Reuters, Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun said on Wednesday the planemaker will only support the operation of its airplanes if it is 100% confident in their safety. We don't put planes in the air that we don't have 100% confidence in, Calhoun told reporters in Washington before one of a series of meetings with U.S. senators on the grounding of the company's 737 MAX 9 jets in the U.S. Calhoun added that Boeing fully understands the gravity of the situation. According to Reuters, below are some key quotes from a news conference by the Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem and Senior Deputy Governor Carolyn Rogers on Wednesday after the central bank held key interest rate at 5%. Macklem on timing of a rate cut. According to Yahoo Finance, oil futures rallied amid the largest crude inventory drop since July, which was offset by an increase in gasoline stockpiles. West Texas Intermediate tested intraday highs to trade more than 1% higher around $75 a barrel. Brent, the international benchmark price, rose fractionally to hover around $80 per barrel. According to Yahoo Finance, Elon Musk might be the face of Tesla, blurring his own reputation and the identity of the brand. But as closely tied as the man is to the company and its $700 billion valuation, there is one thing he doesn't have that some of his other tech industry peers enjoy, more control. Last week, 
Musk publicly demanded that Tesla's board give him even greater influence over the company by boosting his stake to 25%, or else he'd continue to develop artificial intelligence tech somewhere else. According to Reuters, some Citigroup employees who are being laid off this week in New York, part of one of the biggest job reductions at a bank since the financial crisis, are expected to be paid salaries through April, two sources with knowledge of the matter said. In meetings with managers and human resources representatives this week, employees affected by the job cuts were given more details about the exit process, according to the two sources who declined to be identified discussing personnel matters. The arrangements may vary depending on individual circumstances. According to Reuters, the door plug that blew off an Alaska Airlines MAX 9 jet this month was removed for repair and reinstalled by Boeing's mechanics at its Renton assembly line, the Seattle Times reported on Wednesday, citing a person familiar with the matter. Boeing declined to comment on details that are under investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board. According to Reuters, Pottery Barn owner William Sonoma is rerouting shipments and has been working on contingency plans to circumvent the shipping crisis brought on by the Red Sea attacks, CEO Laura Albert told CNBC in an interview on Wednesday. Companies in the US and Europe are facing higher freight costs and shipping delays of two weeks or more after attacks by Iranian-aligned Houthi rebels on commercial vessels in the Red Sea disrupted global shipping. According to Reuters, Boeing is set to deliver its first 737 MAX to a Chinese airline since March 2019 on Wednesday, flight data shows, ending a four-year freeze on imports of the U.S. plane-maker's most profitable product in a respite for severely strained trade relations between the world's two largest economies. For Boeing, the delivery symbolizes the reopening of doors to China, one of the fastest-growing aerospace markets, which Boeing projects will compose 20% of the world's aircraft demand through 2042. It represents a vote of confidence for the planemaker during a difficult period for Boeing following a January 5 mid-air cabin blowout during a full flight. According to Reuters, the nose wheel of a Boeing 757 passenger jet operated by Delta Airlines popped off and rolled away as the plane was lining up for takeoff over the weekend from Atlanta's International Airport, according to the airline and regulators. An FAA notice filed on Monday said the aircraft was lining up and waiting for takeoff at Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport when the nose wheel came off and rolled down the hill. According to Reuters, shares of Morgan Stanley Direct Lending Fund dipped 1% in their market debut on Wednesday, as investor appetite for new issues continues to remain muted. The fund chiefly invests in riskier bonds, like those issued by middle market companies or by private equity firms looking to finance their acquisitions. Such bonds typically fetch higher interest than top-rated corporate debt. According to Reuters, unionized workers at carmaker Audi Mexico unit are set to strike on Wednesday after failing to reach an agreement with the company over a new collective contract, the company's union leader told reporters. Workers are seeking a double-digit wage increase, union leader Cesar Orta said. According to Reuters, EU countries and lawmakers are expected to agree on rules next week which would force Europe-based companies to prioritize production of key products to prevent a supply chain crisis, a key lawmaker in charge of the legislation said on Wednesday. The European Commission proposed the single market emergency instrument last year in the wake of bottlenecks caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and Russia's Ukraine invasion. According to Reuters, a record 21.3 million Americans have so far enrolled for coverage under Obamacare health insurance for 2024, a 31% jump over the year earlier, and the highest since its inception, the U.S. government said on Wednesday. The Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, was signed in 2010 and was former U.S. President Barack Obama's signature piece of domestic legislation which helps low- and middle-income Americans who do not have access to affordable health insurance coverage through an employer. According to Bloomberg, Nippon Steel Corp. made an aggressive all-cash offer for United States Steel Corp. that propelled the Japanese company into the lead in the final hours of a bidding war for the iconic American steelmaker. Nippon Steel executives submitted a sweetened cash offer to acquire the Pittsburgh-based company for $55 a share on December 16, shortly after U.S. Steel's bankers asked the suitor for a final proposal. U.S. Steel determined that weekend in a special meeting that Nippon Steel's offer was superior to one from Company D, 
which according to a person familiar with the process was a $54 a share cash and stock deal from Cleveland Cliffs Inc. According to Bloomberg, a top Biden administration official said that the U.S. is concerned by actions that Venezuela's government has taken against the opposition and civil society a few months after an agreement aimed at fostering a competitive and fair vote in presidential elections later this year. The administration of President Nicolas Maduro in the new year has escalated pressure against members of the opposition and government critics, citing alleged conspiracies and plots against the regime dating to May 2023. An October accord between the government and the opposition won the government some relief from the U.S.'s maximum pressure sanctions. According to Reuters, the U.S. Navy dock landing ship Gunston Hall left port on Wednesday to mark the first movement for the largest NATO exercise since the Cold War, officials said. What is happening? According to Yahoo Finance, throughout the frenzied final days of the contest between Donald Trump and Nikki Haley in New Hampshire, Social security was one of the most prominent issues on the airwaves. That could be a preview of what to expect over the 285 days to come in the 2024 campaign as the presidential race now likely begins to shift in earnest towards another head-to-head -head contest between Trump and President Joe Biden. According to Reuters, General Motors is set to invest 7 billion reais in Brazil between this year and 2028, the firm said on Wednesday, in a bid to boost sustainable mobility. The sum will fund a complete renewal of the automaker's vehicle portfolio in Latin America's largest economy and will help develop technologies and create new businesses, GM said in a statement. According to Yahoo Finance, Netflix shares surged double digits on Wednesday, climbing at much at 14%, after the streaming giant reported strong fourth-quarter earnings with subscribers topping 13 million. Revenue beat consensus estimates of $8.71 billion to hit $8.83 billion in the quarter, an increase of 12.5% compared to the same period last year, as the streamer leaned on revenue initiatives like its crackdown on password sharing and ad-supported tier, in addition to the recent price hikes on certain subscription plans. According to Reuters, some investors are already gaming out how the U.S. 2024 presidential election could impact markets as former President Donald Trump's victory in the New Hampshire Republican primary brings him closer to a rematch with Democratic President Joe Biden. Any calculation of how stocks, bonds and currencies could react to the results of the November vote comes with caveats, especially since it's early in the year and betting markets are split on which candidate will prevail. Most investors also believe drivers such as Federal Reserve policy, the economic cycle and corporate earnings will ultimately matter more for markets over the long term. According to Reuters, after a quarter in which Netflix reaffirmed its dominance in streaming video, its $5 billion deal to acquire rights to broadcast live wrestling suggests the streaming pioneer is taking a page from the old-school cable TV playbook. Netflix said on Tuesday it will carry World Wrestling Entertainment's flagship weekly program, Raw, from next year, deepening its investment in live programming and offering its subscribers outside the U.S. other weekly wrestling shows including, SmackDown. According to Reuters, Brazil said on Wednesday it received an approval this week from Pakistan to export live cattle to the South Asian country, as well as the embryos and semen of cows. Brazil's agriculture ministry said in a statement that it also received the green light to export young tilapia fish to the Philippines. According to Reuters, Kinder Morgan said on Wednesday it continues to have a bullish outlook for natural gas demand banking on higher demand from liquefied natural gas export facilities and increased exports to Mexico. The United States was the largest exporter of LNG in 2023, with 8.6 million metric tons leaving the country's terminals in December. The U.S. Energy Information Administration expects North America's LNG export capacity to increase to 24.3 billion cubic feet per day by end 2027 partially driven by new plants in Mexico and Canada. According to Reuters, the Biden administration is delaying a decision on 17 liquefied natural gas export terminals, including one called CP2 that would be the nation's largest but which is opposed by environmentalists, the New York Times reported on Wednesday. Venture Global's Calcasieu Pass 2 facility in Louisiana is twice the size of its present CP plant, with an export capacity of 20 million metric tons per year. According to Bloomberg, 
Former Treasury Secretary Robert Rubin said the U.S. is in a terrible place with regard to its federal deficits and called for tax increases to address the deterioration. The risks are enormous and some of them are materializing already, like higher interest rates, Rubin said Wednesday on Bloomberg Television's Wall Street Week with David Weston. The roughly three percentage point surge in longer term Treasury yields in recent years is due in part to the fiscal outlook and its impact on inflation, he said. According to Reuters, the United States was concerned by an Israeli attack on a UN training center sheltering displaced people in Gaza's Khan Yunus on Wednesday, Deputy State Department spokesperson Vedant Patel said, repeating Washington's calls for protection of civilians, humanitarian workers, and aid facilities. We deplore today's attack on the UN's Khan Yunus training center, Patel told a news briefing, calling it incredibly concerning. According to Reuters, KPS Capital Partners recently explored a bid for UK specialty chemicals maker Elementus but has since paused its work, two people familiar with the matter told Reuters. The New York-based private equity firm in December submitted an offer valuing the FTSE 250 company at about 160p per share, but the Elementus board wanted around 180p, one of the people said. According to Bloomberg, as both the worst performing and most expensive stock among the magnificent seven tech megacaps, Tesla Inc. faces mounting pressure as it reports fourth quarter earnings Wednesday. For investors, the issue is the breakneck growth they've come to expect of Tesla as shrinking. Concerns about fading demand for electric vehicles have sent its shares down 16% this month through Tuesday's close. That paints a troubling picture of market sentiment, with Tesla tumbling while other tech counterparts soar to record highs. Price cuts and rising costs have added to the gloom. According to Bloomberg, the number of Americans applying for unemployment insurance have been defying expectations and hovering near historically low levels, but they're not a good indicator of the state of the labor market right now, according to a Bloomberg economics analysis. The latest weekly data showed initial claims at 187,000, near the century low of 182,000 reached in September 2022 and continuing claims falling to 1.81 million. The figures don't necessarily suggest that the job market is tight, economists Anna Wong and Eliza Winger wrote in a note. According to Reuters, U.S. oil refiners are expected to report another quarter of lower earnings versus year-ago levels due to weaker fuel prices and after a proliferation of plant outages, analysts said. Refining profits soared in 2022 after disruptions to global trade from Russia's invasion of Ukraine drove margins to record levels. According to Reuters, the United Auto Workers Union's leader endorsed U.S. President Joe Biden's re-election bid on Wednesday with fiery speech at a legislative conference that was also harshly critical of Republican former President Donald Trump. According to Reuters, Political comedian Jon Stewart is returning to The Daily Show as executive producer and will host every Monday starting February 12th through the 2024 election cycle, Paramount announced on Wednesday. The show will feature a rotating lineup of hosts for the other three nights it airs each week, the company said. According to Bloomberg, just 24 days into 2024, and the SP500 has already blown past the Wall Street consensus over where the index will finish the year. Helped by advances in NVIDIA Corp. and Microsoft Corp., the world's most-watched equity benchmark is again on the up in Wednesday trading. Rising for five sessions, the SP500 just surpassed 4,867, the average level where forecasters in a Bloomberg survey pegged it 11 months from now. According to Bloomberg, six people died after a plane carrying Rio Tinto Group staff crashed en route to the company's Diavik diamond mine in Canada's north. Four passengers and two Northwestern Air Lease Limited. Crew members were killed while flying Tuesday from the Northwest Territories town of Fort Smith to the mine site, according to a Wednesday statement from the region's coroner service. One person survived the crash and was taken to a hospital in Yellowknife. According to Bloomberg, Amazon.com Inc.'s Ring Home Doorbell Unit says it will stop letting police departments request footage from users' video doorbells and surveillance cameras, retreating from a practice that was criticized by civil liberties groups and some elected officials. Next week, the company will disable its Request for Assistance tool, the program that had allowed law enforcement to seek footage from users on a voluntary basis, Eric Kuhn, who runs Ring's Neighbors app, said in a blog post on Wednesday.
police and fire departments will have to seek a warrant to request footage from users or show the company evidence of an ongoing emergency. According to Reuters, the United Auto Workers Union has endorsed U.S. President Joe Biden's re-election, backing a man the union's outspoken leader, Sean Fain, has publicly rebuked. More than 380,000 UAW members are scattered in states that include Michigan, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, where narrow margins have decided the overall winner of the past two presidential elections, and the powerful union's backing could boost Biden's campaign. According to Reuters, Scion Power said on Wednesday the battery technology startup raised $75 million in an early-stage funding round led by South Korean battery manufacturer LG Energy Solutions. The company, which also received new investment from former Google CEO Eric Schmidt's family office, Hillspire, intends to seek technical and market validation of its technology and plans to build a manufacturing line to make lithium metal cells. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. 30-year yield climbed to its highest level so far this year Wednesday after poor demand for an auction of five-year notes, a week before the Treasury is expected to announce a heavier borrowing schedule for the February to April period. The longest maturity Treasury yield rose more than four basis points to 4.407 percent, its highest level since December 5. Yields across maturities were already higher on the day before the $61 billion auction at 1 p.m. New York time and propelled by stronger-than-expected gauges of economic activity in January. According to Reuters, Trans Mountain Corp. will begin line fill in February on its long-delayed Canadian oil pipeline expansion and expects it to be in service in the second quarter, a company executive said on Wednesday. The C30.9 billion dollars expansion will nearly triple the flow of crude on Trans Mountain from Alberta to Canada's Pacific coast but has been plagued by years of delays and cost overruns. According to Yahoo Finance, Intel will report its fourth quarter earnings after the bell on Thursday, as tech stocks continue to rally on Wall Street's ongoing exuberance for everything artificial intelligence. Intel's announcement comes as the company seeks to push its own AI bona fides and follows the debut of its core ultra line of PC chips in December, which Intel says will let consumers run AI apps directly on their laptops and desktops. According to Reuters, German Pilots Union VC on Wednesday called on its members to strike for 24 hours at Lufthansa Group's leisure airline Discover on Friday to push demands related to pay and working conditions in wage negotiations. The announcement comes after VC members voted in favor of strike action on Tuesday. According to Yahoo Finance, we're less than a month into the new year, but it feels like it's been a heck of a lot longer for Apple Watchers. The tech giant has been making headlines left and right as it juggles a handful of downgrades to its stock price, faces required major changes to its App Store policies, and gears up for a potential antitrust lawsuit that could target large swaths of its business. All of this comes as Apple prepares to launch its $3,499 Vision Pro headset. Apple's most ambitious product in years, the Vision Pro catapults the company into a product category that even established players like Meta have struggled to turn into a hit. According to Yahoo Finance, while Republicans in Congress block further aid for Ukraine, Russia is gaining an edge in its bid to extend its territory right up to the NATO military alliance's eastern border. Ukraine is running short of crucial weapons while Russia's economy is now mobilized for war and cranking out more artillery shells than the United States and Europe combined. The United States may yet buck up Ukraine, but if it doesn't, the isolationist obstruction of some Republicans in Washington could turn out to be an epic mistake that costs Americans vastly more than it saves. According to Reuters, the United States and Iraq are set to initiate talks on the end of a U.S.-led military coalition in Iraq and how to replace it with bilateral relations, four sources said on Wednesday, a step forward in a process that was stalled by the Gaza War. In doing so, the U.S. had dropped preconditions that attacks against it by Iran-backed Iraqi militant groups in Iraq first stop, three of the sources said. According to Reuters, Public prosecutors chasing illegal gold mining in Brazil's Amazon region on Wednesday opened an investigation into online sales of mercury through Mercado Libre, Latin America's largest e-commerce site. The federal prosecutor's office recommended Mercado Libre ban mercury ads from its platform, or inform authorities who is placing them and establish better controls over the trade in what it called, an extremely dangerous pollutant.
According to Reuters, Tesla said on Wednesday its fourth quarter gross margin shrank from a year earlier as it cut prices and offered incentives to boost demand for its electric vehicles. The company reported a gross margin of 17.6% for the three months ended December, compared with 23.8% a year earlier, and analysts' average estimate of 18.3% according to LSCG data. According to Yahoo Finance, IBM reported revenue rose 4% last quarter, driven in part by demand for its AI products and services, as well as hybrid cloud. The computing giant also said free cash flow will improve this year. We're seeing very good increased demand overall for generative AI offerings, IBM chief financial officer James Cavanaugh said in an interview with Yahoo Finance. We've got thousands of clients we're having interactions with. Our use cases and pilots are up about fivefold. According to Reuters, the Canadian dollar weakened to a near one-week low against its U.S. counterpart on Wednesday as the Bank of Canada's lack of urgency to cut interest rates raised concern among some investors of a deeper slowdown in the domestic economy. The loonie was trading 0.5% lower at 1.3524 to the greenback, or 73.94 U.S. cents, its weakest level since last Thursday. According to Bloomberg, ServiceNow Inc. provided a revenue outlook for the current quarter that topped Wall Street estimates, spurring optimism that the enterprise software provider will continue expanding even as many peers have reported slowing growth. Subscription sales, which account for the bulk of the company's revenue, will increase about 24% to $2.51 billion in the period ending in March, ServiceNow said Wednesday in a statement. Analysts, on average, estimated $2.46 billion. For the full year, subscription revenue will grow about 22%, slightly above the average projection. According to Reuters, ServiceNow raised its annual subscription revenue forecast on Wednesday, as the software firm expects to attract new clients for its generative artificial intelligence products. Businesses are investing in services and products to automate their workflow, in a bid to speed up operations and improve communication, boosting demand for companies such as ServiceNow. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden on Wednesday vetoed legislation aimed at reversing his administration's waiver of Buy America requirements for government-funded electric vehicle charging stations, according to a senior U.S. official. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in Asian markets. The focus for Asian markets on Thursday will be on whether the improvement in investor sentiment toward China and Hong Kong continues following the Chinese central bank's latest move to inject liquidity and support asset prices. According to Reuters, LAM research forecast third-quarter revenue largely above analysts' estimates and topped expectations on Wednesday, as chipmakers placed orders for the company's manufacturing equipment on a rebound in demand for electronics products. The company had struggled last year with the fallout from an inventory buildup at chipmakers following dwindling demand for mobiles to computers. According to Bloomberg, the European Union estimates it will need to more than double its electricity generation by the middle of the century and boost renewables to reach its ambitious goal of climate neutrality. To pursue emissions reduction targets recommended by scientists for the next decade, power production will need to increase to 5,212 terawatt-hours by 2040, from 2,905 terawatt-hours in 2021, according to an analysis done by the European Commission. Output would need to further expand to 6,922 terawatt-hours by 2050 as consumers increasingly rely on electric vehicles and turn to power for home heating, while utilities use more renewables as an energy source. According to Reuters, Danish energy company Orsted said on Wednesday it has signed an agreement with Eversource Energy to acquire full ownership of offshore wind farm Sunrise Wind from the U.S. energy firm. Currently, Eversource owns 50% of the 924-megawatt offshore wind farm that would deliver power to New York. According to Bloomberg, SL Green Realty Corp. plans to start raising funds for a New York City Opportunity debt vehicle this month. The Manhattan-based real estate investment trust is targeting $1 billion, according to its quarterly earnings statement Wednesday. According to Reuters, Equipment rental firm United Rentals on Wednesday posted a 6.25% rise in fourth-quarter profit, on the back of robust demand for industrial tools. 
U.S. companies have ramped up their manufacturing activity over the past two years after the pandemic crimped their ability to produce enough products to meet demand. According to Reuters, the world's largest oil services company, SLB, said on Wednesday that it was recovering $560 million of the $1.015 billion it is owed by Pemex via a financial institution that had loaned the Mexican state company money. SLB, formerly known as Schlumberger, said in its 2023 annual report that its primary customer in Mexico accounts for 13% of its accounts receivable and that it had issued a credit default swap to the bank to guarantee payment. According to Bloomberg, emerging market currencies and stocks extended gains Wednesday as the latest stimulus measures from China added to positive signals from the U.S. economy to boost risk appetite. Developing world stocks are heading toward their biggest two-day gain this year, while currencies are advancing for a fifth day, rising 0.3%. Almost all Latin American currencies are strengthening, with the Mexican peso and Brazil's real leading advances. According to Reuters, the European Central Bank will keep interest rates unchanged at a record high on Thursday and is likely to push back on investor bets for aggressive policy easing this spring, despite recession risks and a rapid slowdown in inflation. The ECB ended its quickest rate hiking cycle in September but has been adamant that even discussing a reversal would be premature, since price pressures have yet to be fully extinguished and crucial wage talks remain ongoing. According to Reuters, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has been looking into 22 cases of T-cell cancers that occurred after treatment with CAR-T, two top FDA officials said on Wednesday, days after asking drug makers to add a serious warning on the label of their cancer therapies that use the CAR-T technology. In an article published in the New England Journal of Medicine, the officials, Dr. Peter Marks and Dr. Nicole Verdun, said that secondary malignancies have been reported in conjunction with five of the six available CAR-T products and that the cancers included T-cell lymphoma, T-cell large granular lymphocytosis, peripheral T-cell lymphoma, and cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. According to Reuters, wireless tower operator Crown Castle beat Wall Street estimates for annual site rental revenue on Wednesday, driven by steady demand for its communications infrastructure. Shares of the Houston, Texas-based rose 1.1% in aftermarket trading. According to Bloomberg, China-related stocks are poised to extend a two-day rally Thursday in a test of investor confidence in the latest measures to support the economy. U.S. tech shares edged higher ahead of closely-watched earnings reports. Futures for benchmarks in Hong Kong, China and Australia rose while those for Japan were little changed. A gauge of U.S.-listed Chinese companies jumped almost 2% Wednesday after the People's Bank of China said it would cut the reserve requirement ratio for banks and hinted at more. According to Reuters, Singapore's central bank is widely expected to leave its monetary policy unchanged this month and hold off from easing its settings until it sees more evidence that inflation is falling consistently. All 13 analysts polled by Reuters expect the Monetary Authority of Singapore to hold off making changes to its policy in the scheduled review, which is due to be announced on January 29. According to Reuters, South Korea's economy grew in the fourth quarter of 2023 at the same pace as the previous quarter, official advance estimates showed on Thursday, beating market expectations. Gross domestic product for the October to December quarter was 0.6% higher than the preceding three months on a seasonally adjusted basis, according to the Bank of Korea. According to Bloomberg, the harsh economic reality confronting many Australians means Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is set to break a key campaign promise. Australia will amend controversial legislated tax cuts by reducing the windfall for wealthy households to provide greater relief for low and middle income earners. According to Reuters, South Korea's economy grew in the fourth quarter of 2023 at the same pace as the previous quarter, official advance estimates showed on Thursday, beating market expectations. Gross domestic product for the October to December quarter was 0.6% higher than the preceding three months on a seasonally adjusted basis, according to the Bank of Korea. According to Reuters, a Japanese whiskey, Renaissance, will help Kirin Holdings more than double exports of its premium brand by 2025, the company's master blender said. Japan had fewer than 10 distilleries for most of its whiskey history, which hit the century mark last year. 
But that number shot past 100 in the past few years as new entrants sought to take advantage of huge global demand and eyewatering prices. According to Reuters, Skydance Media CEO David Ellison has made a preliminary offer to buy National Amusements, the holding company of the Redstone family, as a way to take control of Paramount Global, Bloomberg News reported on Wednesday. Ellison has held discussions with Paramount about merging it with Skydance Media, after he takes control, the report said citing people familiar with the matter. Both sides have hired advisors and are exchanging financial information, the report added. According to Reuters, an experimental gene therapy being developed by a Chinese company restored hearing in children with congenital deafness, researchers working on a clinical trial reported on Wednesday, adding to growing evidence of the efficacy of such treatments. Five of six young children with profound deafness experienced hearing recovery and improvements in speech recognition six months after treatment with the therapy from Refresh Gene Therapeutics, according to the report published in The Lancet. According to Bloomberg, SK Hynix Inc. reported a surprise operating profit boosted by strong sales of high-end memory chips used to power artificial intelligence applications. The world's number two maker of memory chips reported an operating profit of 346 billion won in the December quarter, compared with analyst estimates for a 169.9 billion won loss, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Revenue came to 11.3 trillion won, beating even the highest analyst forecast. According to Reuters, South Korea's SK Hynix on Thursday posted its first quarterly profit in a year on robust demand for high-end chips used in artificial intelligence and restocking orders from Chinese mobile clients. The world's second biggest memory chip maker reported a 346 billion won operating profit for the October to December quarter versus a loss of 1.9 trillion won a year earlier and a 1.8 trillion won loss in the third quarter. According to Reuters, Billionaire Eddie Lampert must pay $18 million to shareholders of Sears Hometown and Outlet Stores Inc. for short-changing them in 2019 when he bought out minority investors in the company he controlled, a Delaware judge ruled on Wednesday. Vice Chancellor Travis Laster, the judge on Delaware's Court of Chancery, said Lampert owed $1.78 per share plus interest to Sears Hometown investors, who received $3.21 per share under the deal. According to Reuters, Autonomous vehicle technology company Aurora Innovation said on Wednesday it had cut 3% of its workforce as part of a reorganization exercise. Aurora had 1,700 employees by 2022 end, as per the company's securities filings. According to Bloomberg, Tesla Inc., the company best known for its production of electric vehicles, said its energy storage division, the unit that makes utility and home batteries, will likely be its growth engine for rate of deployments and revenue in 2024. While the company's energy storage deployments dipped in the fourth quarter compared with the previous one, total installations for 2023 were more than double 2022. And the unit's profits nearly quadrupled. Tesla said it installed 14.7 gigawatt hours of battery storage last year. According to Reuters, Sandy Hook conspiracy theorist Alex Jones could exit Chapter 11 bankruptcy by late March or early April, his lawyer said on Wednesday after a judge decided families whom he owes $1.5 billion for lying about the 2012 school shooting can vote on competing plans to resolve their claims. U.S. bankruptcy judge Christopher Lopez in Houston allowed Jones to solicit votes on a proposal that would pay at least $55 million to the relatives of 20 students and six staff members killed in the 2012 mass shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. According to Bloomberg, the Federal Reserve raised the rate on loans to banks issued under an emergency lending program launched last year, after borrowing surged in recent weeks as institutions took advantage of the attractive financing terms. The institution's bank term funding program, unveiled during the regional banking crisis to ease stress in the financial system, will not be extended beyond its March 11 deadline, top officials had signaled earlier this month. According to Bloomberg, South Korea is looking at naming companies with poor governance structures, as it seeks to replicate Japan's success in boosting stocks by corporate reforms. The financial regulator in Seoul is considering measures that are similar to the Tokyo Bourse's name and shame policy, according to an official at the Financial Services Commission, who declined to be named discussing internal deliberations. Korea Exchange will come up with an indicator that measures the effort companies put in, 
the person said, adding that the plan will be finalized in the first quarter. According to Bloomberg, Tropical Cyclone Coralie has strengthened as the storm moved toward the Australian coast with damaging wind gusts and heavy rains. Coralie is now a Category 2 cyclone with wind gusts at 130 km per hour, according to the Bureau of Meteorology. The storm is expected to cross the Queensland coast near Townsville on Thursday evening before weakening on Friday as the system moves inland, the forecaster said. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. stock market may suffer a correction in coming months as the economy slows, according to Deutsche Bank AG. The world's largest economy may post 0.8% annual growth this year, down from a forecast of 2.3% for 2023, said Christian Nolting, Deutsche Bank's global chief investment officer. As that deceleration seeps into the stock market, a drop of 5% to 10% from current levels is likely to occur in the near term, he said. According to Reuters, oil prices rose on Thursday after data showed U.S. crude stockpiles fell more than expected last week, while the Chinese central bank's cut-in-bank's reserve ratio reinforced hopes of more stimulus measures and economic recovery. The March contract for Brent crude gained 20 cents, 0.3 percent, to $80.24 a barrel as at 0128 GMT. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude climbed 22 cents, or 0.3 percent, to $75.31 a barrel. According to Reuters, shares in Australia's Domino's Pizza Enterprises posted a record drop on Thursday, after the retail food outlet operator withdrew its fiscal 2024 outlook and its first half profit forecast missed expectations. The stock slumped as much as 31.1% to $39 Australian dollars and 50 cents, its lowest since August 2019, and was the top laggard on the benchmark index which was up 0.3% as of 0038 GMT. According to Bloomberg, Ong Bang Seng has a penchant for schmoozing with the elite. That's led him to business partnerships with actor Sylvester Stallone and Saudi prince Al-Walid bin Talal, while his decades-long friendship with Formula One supremo Bernie Ecclestone has been credited with bringing the night race to Singapore. Now ONG's ways are taking center stage after an investigation that has already toppled one of the most senior politicians in the city-state, which prides itself on a reputation for clean governance and business-friendly policies. According to Bloomberg, oil advanced to trade near a one-month high after U.S. crude inventories dropped by far more than expected and China announced plans for more stimulus. West Texas Intermediate climbed above $75 a barrel after hitting the highest since December 26 in intraday trade on Wednesday, while Brent closed near $80. U.S. inventories fell by more than 9 million barrels last week, six times more than forecast, to hit the lowest level since October. According to Reuters, the dollar was broadly steady near a six-week high on Thursday, as investors await GDP and other data this week to gauge where U.S. rates are headed while the euro was soft ahead of the European Central Bank's policy meeting later in the day. Data overnight showed U.S. business activity picked up in January and inflation appeared to abate, with a measure of prices charged by companies for their products falling to the lowest level in more than three to half a year. According to Bloomberg, pay for most senior investment bankers at Wall Street firms in Asia dropped to the lowest level in almost two decades, according to people familiar with the matter as a dearth of deals in China and Hong Kong hammered the industry. Total compensation for many senior bankers in Asia x Japan fell to $700,000 to $800,000, well below the $1 million or more they have typically earned since the turn of the millennium, the people said, asking not to be identified discussing private matters. At least 20% of managing directors at banks including Morgan Stanley and UBS Group AG, received no bonuses last year, the people said. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average fell further on Thursday as market participants firmed up bets that the Bank of Japan will exit stimulus in coming months. The Nikkei had slipped 0.4% to 36,070.78 by 0144 GMT, extending losses to a third session. The broader Topix was down 0.28% at 2,522.45. According to Reuters, Asian stocks traded cautiously and bonds fell on Thursday while investors waited on more detail of China's stimulus plans and for a European Central Bank meeting later in the session. 
The dollar bounced from lows after a survey showed U.S. business activity picking up in January. The Canadian dollar fell after the Bank of Canada held rates but dropped language that had said it was prepared for further hikes. According to Bloomberg, global funds are snapping up India's sovereign bonds ahead of the country's addition to global debt indexes, and traders expect them to be a key pillar of demand for the near-record government borrowing in the coming fiscal year. New Delhi will likely announce a gross borrowing of 15.2 trillion rupees for the year starting April 1st, marginally lower than the record 15.43 trillion rupees set for the current year, according to a median estimate in a Bloomberg poll of 21 economists. According to Bloomberg, the Biden administration is set to unveil plans within days for intensifying environmental scrutiny of applications to export natural gas, potentially stalling massive planned projects for months, if not longer. The administration's approach could be announced as soon as the end of this week, according to people familiar with the matter who ask not to be named because there's been no public announcement. White House officials have spent weeks deliberating over the issue, including how aggressive to get, as they navigate competing environmental, economic and political concerns tied to tens of billions of dollars in U.S. gas trade. According to Reuters, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said on Wednesday Chinese automakers will demolish global rivals without trade barriers, underscoring the heat the U.S. electric vehicle market leader faces from the likes of BYD, who are racing to expand worldwide. Musk's comments come after Warren Buffett backed BYD, with its cheaper models and a more varied lineup overtook Tesla as the world's top-selling EV company last quarter, despite Tesla's deep price cuts through 2023. According to Reuters, Dylan Run, a Shanghai-based finance sector executive, started moving a bit of his money into cryptocurrencies in early 2023, when he realized that the Chinese economy and its stock markets were going downhill. Crypto trading and mining has been banned in China since 2021. Run used bank cards issued by small rural commercial banks to buy cryptocurrencies through gray market dealers, and capped each transaction at 50,000 yuan to escape scrutiny. According to Reuters, Japan's top currency diplomat Masato Kanda said he was closely watching how central bank decisions, including an expected end to negative interest rates in Japan, affect markets as speculation over the events could trigger volatile asset moves. Kanda declined to comment on heightening market expectations that the Bank of Japan will end negative rates in April, saying it was among important events that currency authorities were closely watching. According to Bloomberg, Retail traders in Hong Kong lost $1.55 billion on leveraged derivative bets during the recent stock slump, exacerbating market volatility and highlighting the risk of the popular structured product. Trading in hundreds of mostly bullish contracts was terminated from January 17 to 22, exchange data show, wiping out investors' money and triggering a rush by banks to unwind their hedge positions. A bulk of the losses happened on January 17 when the Hang Seng Index posted its biggest decline since October 2022. According to Reuters, an unusually large delegation of about 200 Japanese business leaders arrived in China this week to bolster economic relations in the first such visit in more than four years and in the face of geopolitical headwinds that have strained bilateral ties. Japanese economic delegations had visited China every year since 1975, but those visits lapsed during the COVID-19 era when China largely shuttered its borders due to its stringent pandemic policies. According to Bloomberg, David Ellison has made a preliminary offer to buy National Amusements Inc., the holding company of the Redstone family, as a way to take control of Paramount Global, the media giant that owns MTV and Nickelodeon, according to people familiar with the matter. Ellison has also had discussions with Paramount about merging his film and TV studio, Skydance Media, into the larger media company, after he takes control. Both sides have hired advisors and are exchanging financial information, said the people, who asked to not be identified discussing private conversations. According to Reuters, Apple's smartphone shipments in China shrank 2.1% in the final quarter of 2023 from the same period a year ago but Apple rose to the number one spot in the market, data from research firm IDC showed on Thursday. Huawei's shipments increased 36.2% in the last quarter of the year, the IDC figures showed. The company rose to become the number four smartphone maker in China in the quarter with a 13.9% share. According to Bloomberg, 
In November, Sony Group Corpy's lawyers got a nasty surprise during a routine call from the legal team of Z Enterprises Entertainment Limited. Nearly two years into tortuous merger negotiations to create a $10 billion Indian entertainment giant, Z wanted the Japanese company to agree to a so-called hold harmless clause for its chief executive officer, Puneet Goenka, just weeks before the December 21 deal deadline. According to Bloomberg, Indonesian President Joko Widodo's behind-the-scenes backing of a presidential candidate is fracturing his government, with several ministers weighing resignation. Among them is Finance Minister Sri Mulyani Indrawati, who has been integral in steadying Southeast Asia's largest economy, according to people who ask not to be named discussing sensitive information. Others who are considering leaving their posts include Foreign Affairs Minister Retno Marsudi and Minister of Public Works and Housing Basuki Hadamaljono, the people said.